Hi, I'm Roger Durbin. Welcome to my blog. Well, I'm 164 flights in now, and I wanted to update you on what I'd learned so far. After 164 flights, I'm still using all original parts, blades and such, although I have purchased a few spare parts just in case. I have a hairline crack in my central cross, which I epoxied in, it seems to be holding fine. I also have purchased a couple extra batteries and a charger. Uh, the aftermarket batteries are 1600s and they do give me an extra couple minutes of flight time. I purchased a case to protect my Bebop when traveling. I purchased a stick and find Bluetooth sensor for protection against loss. And I also purchased a glass lens to protect the Bebop lens to, to play with anyway to see if it adversely affects my video but I haven't had a chance to try it yet. I've done extensive experimentation and I think I've discovered another situation that causes trouble from time to time. In my 164 flights two times I lost Wi-Fi from the Bebop and couldn't reconnect. First time I thought it was from Wi-Fi interference but as I've studied this and after the second time I, I did some experimentation and I I believe it is caused by heat. Fortunately, both times that I lost Wi-Fi, I had prior got GPS lock, and both times it returned to over my head, and then when the battery got down to about 13%, it landed itself. And when this happened the second time, I studied the situation. I found that the drone was extremely hot. It had started to act up maybe a minute or two uh, before I lost the Wi-Fi and couldn't reconnect. And when it did this, I noticed that the GPS light had went yellow and the first person video had started jerking and then locked up completely right before it froze and lost Wi-Fi. After it landed, I, the drone was really hot and both times this happened, it was after the drone had been on for maybe an hour. And because what I would do, I would fly and then I would land and then I would hook it up and I would dump the video and that would take a few minutes and then I would unplug and change the battery and fly again. So it was basically on for an hour straight when this happened. Verin tested the drone and I couldn't make it heat up with the bottom cover off. But at low altitudes, the sonar didn't work right. Without the cover, sometimes it would dive at low level or it would pop up and it wouldn't maintain height when it was flying up a hill. So I bought an extra cover and on the end where the fan is, I added several holes under the fan to allow the heat to escape. And since installing it, I haven't experienced any heat problems. I flew for an hour without any problems trying to create a heat problem and it worked just fine. So if you're sure you don't have Wi-Fi interference, you lose GPS, and your video starts to break up, I would land immediately and check for heat. I have noticed that every once in a while, my Wi-Fi settings will reset. Usually when I reset the Bebop, or maybe I clip a prop on some grass and I have to reset it, my Wi-Fi will reset to auto and I'll have to go back in and change the settings again. I still maintain that running on channel 159 in the 5 gigahertz range is probably the best thing to do. So anyway, I check that each time just to make sure it hasn't reset itself. I can't stress how important it is that you get GPS locked, even if it's just for a second before you take off. That's the only way to be safe. I believe that no GPS lock and freezing first person video can be a sign of imminent Wi-Fi loss due to heat. A couple other times when I was having trouble getting GPS lock, after several flights, I was probably getting close to a serious problem simply because of heat. And my ventilation holes seem to have solved this problem. For added protection, I also bought a stick and find Bluetooth sensor, which I have mounted on the bottom of the Bebop. If something serious did happen, I could walk around with my phone and track it up to about 150 feet. 
Now maybe that doesn't seem like it's very far, but I figure you're gonna know the general direction it goes if it takes off. And uh, it can only go so far. So, you know, even with that, I could walk around with my phone and when I got within 150 feet of it, it would come up on my phone and I could track it and I could zero in on it. Not bad protection for $25 a sensor. Well, I hope these few tips will help as you fly your Bebop drone. Please subscribe to my channel. More to come soon.